Hi, my name is Jessica Pennington. I'm a market analyst intern here at CA Technologies. I'm with Dr. Renee Steiner, and we are here today to discuss the internal implementation of CA continuous delivery products. Hi, Renee. Hey, Jessica, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good. So tell me, what has your role been during this entire internal implementation process? Well, it's funny, my, my role actually started because we decided that um, we needed a new process. We needed to deliver better quality f uh, software quicker, and we needed feedback from customers faster, and we weren't getting that with the processes that we had. So we, know, we knew something needed to change. You're heading up the continuous improvement team. What kind of skills does your team possess? Well, Jessica, we're developers by trade, but quality engineers by choice. We're really invested and interested in making sure that we have good quality software. So uh, that's how we've ended up where we are. Um, we have skill sets ranging from Java developers who've been in the business over 15 years to some that are just starting out in their Java skills. How is your team structured and how do they fit into the organization as a whole? The continuous improvement team spans the entire organization, so we help uh, all of the products. Now, we also do have quality engineers that are embedded into each of the Scrum teams for all the products. Talk to me about Scrum methodology and why you feel it's important for your team. Yes, yeah, Scrum allows us to inspect and adapt as we go along and do it quickly. So our iterations happen very fast. We can present it to a customer. It's obvious if we're on the right track or not. So Renee, you're on this DevOps journey. Where did you begin and where are you now? We had that uh, really hard problem with getting regression done quick enough and getting the quality code out to the customers. So that's where we started. We started with our biggest pain point. What would we be able to do to affect the quality of the product the fastest and get stuff out to our clients? So that was an easy place to start. So we started with test automation in order to do that, to get rid of the manualness of the testing, to uh, be able to get feedback quicker to the developers. And that's where we're heading. We have feedback into them right now on how the tests are going and, and the success of their builds nightly, but we want to group that into feedback from customers, uh, from tests, from, from all different factors that really do influence the quality. What tools had you been using prior to the transition? We used the usual suspects. We had Team City for continuous integration. We used Ant scripts to automate uh, the actual test automation and to um, push builds where we needed them to be. So just your average, everyday tool set. And what tools have you added in since this process began? We've added in a lot of tools. I use application test to do test automation. I use service virtualization to remove constraints. Release automation does my orchestration of the build. And we also use tools outside of our BU as APM and UIM. So talk to me about your systems constraints. What has service virtualization done for you? So we specifically have used service virtualization to remove constraints with databases and third-party services that we're not interested in testing. They're not our services. We're interested in just making sure that we get the data back that we expect. So by doing that, the developers can, uh, aren't constrained by one database, making sure that database is clean and can move on several develop developers at the same time. So earlier you mentioned test automation. Do you know what percentage of tests you've now automated? Yeah, it's a good question. I do know the answer to that. But I prefer to focus on uh, test coverage, really. Um, it's, it's a more you know, meaningful uh, metric. We want to know how much of the code is covered by our tests, not necessarily how many tests that we have. And why do you feel that that's more important? Well, it goes back to my most painful uh, uh, point here is that regression was taking too, too long. Um, if we know that we have better code coverage, we know we have less to manually regress, and that's the name of the game. Renee, can you tell me some of the specific benefits you've received throughout this transformation? Yeah, Jessica, there, there's been several. By reducing our regression cycle, we're able to um, get it out quicker, but we also have wider coverage of the code. We have better uh, idea of what our quality really is, and we know that we're delivering it to the customer. Um, also, by shortening that regression cycle, we can get those releases out much quicker. They happen on a much more frequent basis, therefore the customer can benefit. Uh, this also requires that the developers uh, get that feedback, and, and they're getting that feedback quicker from us. Um, they're also doing their own tests to make sure that they're covering their stuff. Do you feel that this is reflected throughout any business process changes? 
Yeah, we've had to tweak some, of course, uh, as we're inspecting and adapting. Uh, we firmed up the definition of done. We've added a few things to that to make sure that uh, when it gets out, it's solid. But we also added a definition of ready so that when it gets into the sprint queue, it's, it has everything it needs for a developer to grab it and go. So that's put a, a, a little bit more um, burden up front, but it's paying off with the developer getting it out quicker. Who specifically is setting these goals for your organization? Well, all organizations have goals that are set from the top. But what we really like to focus on are the things that come out of our uh, customer feedback points. Uh, we get customer feedback at every sprint. Uh, we get customer feedback at every beta uh, period, too. We like to incorporate what we're hearing from the customer and incorporate those into our goals. Can you talk me through your continuous delivery workflow? Yeah, I'd love to, Jessica, because that's where this all comes together and it's a lot of fun. So when we have a build from Team City, we run the automation on it. So app test will then uh, run automation. If it's successful, we have all tests that pass, then release automation. We'll get that and promote it to a dev environment that will be ready when the developers come in the next morning. They can test on it. They, it's fresh. They know they have a good build from the previous day's work, and it's ready to go. After that, the developer signs off on it. Management can sign off on it. It can be promoted to a user test lab. After that, it gets signed off. It can get promoted further on to an actual pre-GA version that uh, other teams can then test on. So by using uh, all these tools together, we can have the continuous flow from test to provision to uh, getting it all the way through to the end test. What are some of the specific products that you've used this new release cadence on? Well, we've been implementing the DevOps solution for quite a while. So it's, we started probably about uh, two years ago in this, in this journey. And so it's been everything from uh, dev test, service virtualization, release automation, uh, release automation action packs. Everything has gone through this process. So we've just added on to it little by little and, and, and increased the effectiveness of it. You mentioned release automation action packs. Can you go into a little more detail about the process for that specific project? Sure, and it's very similar to what I mentioned before, how it goes through the whole flow from the build to the test environment to dev environment, all that. All that. However, specifically with release automation action packs, we use service virtualization really well in there because of course we're doing integrations. We have to integrate with a ton of different products and it's unrealistic to be able to have labs for every single integration point. So we have virtualized a lot of those and we're continuing to virtualize them and, and go on with that to increase the, the library of, of models that we have. As far as the release automation action packs, the release cadence on that is incredibly fast. It's at worst, uh, one, it comes out every month. At best, we have one every week. What metrics are you using to measure your success? Well, we have quite a few, but a, a couple measurements are real key are that regression cycle. We have decreased it uh, at least on one team by 50% in the short time that we've been doing this. Um, also, we've increased automation by probably 100% on one product too, since we've begun. Those are some big numbers. <laughs> yeah, but there's always room to go. Also, by shifting our testing left to earlier in the development process, we've decreased the amount of bugs that reach the field, which is huge. So we've discussed where you came from and what you've done so far. Where are you headed now with this process? Well, the, the process is continuous. We want to improve everything that we're doing. We want to keep in, uh, improving on how quickly we can regress. We want to get the regression down to just a couple of days. Um, we want to increase the code coverage that those tests cover. Uh, we want to get more feedback back to the uh, developers as soon as possible. It sounds like you're really just trying to push home what you've already been doing. Yeah, pretty much. We, we do have the DevOps tool set in place. We're using um, our tool set. Uh, we just need to keep improving on what we have. We need to keep shifting it shifting the testing left, get more virtualized models out there that we can use, that the developers can access, um, increase our testing, inspect and adapt. That's what we're all about, just to get that customer, that code quicker and faster and better quality. Thanks so much for sitting down with me today, Renee. It's really been a pleasure learning about this DevOps journey, and I've definitely learned a lot. Thanks, Jessica. It's been fun.
Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more, you can go to ca.com forward slash cd results.